We're back. Episode five of the Patrick Gale Show covering Albany State basketball from the man himself, the source himself, the coach you see him in his nice quarter zip representing the golden rails, golden blue, bleeding that blue. It's the man himself, Coach Patrick Gale. Coach, how you doing, brother? I'm great, JR. How are you doing, my man? I, I, we, we, we're cold here in Albany, but I think you're a little bit colder where you are. So appreciate you for, for getting out of that nice warm bed to, 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 to come and do this. Yes, it is no snow where you are. <laughs> no, no snow, although we do have a freeze warning, no snow. We might yes. see some snow, though. Hey, snowing in, in southwest Georgia would be a scary sight. There's no salt down there. <laughs> you know, it's 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 cold though, man. It's definitely winter. I can tell you that December is definitely right around the corner. Well, coach, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? First of all, how was your Thanksgiving and how did you uh enjoy that time with your players? Have use as an example, teach your players to be thankful for what they have that play basketball at Albany State, you know, uh be able to be together and grow as young men down there with you guys. Well, you know, I appreciate you uh, asking, um, you know, the players, they, a lot of young people, and I talked to the head coach at Spring Hill, um, Fred Kennedy, and he made a great point because he used to coach professionally. And he said, a lot of kids said that they want to be professional players and they don't understand that professional basketball players, the holidays, you, you're playing games. So you look at, the, there were a lot of Division One games on, you know, on Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving week. So they're not, you know, with their families like, you know, every other student on campus. So I just want to make sure that people understand that student athletes, there's a large sacrifice you make when you play collegiate athletics because, you know, especially basketball, we're a two-semester sport. So we don't really get the holiday break like everybody else. And, you know, that is a big deal with, with student athletes, man. You want to be with your family. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've had, you know, uh, some, some, some guys suffer some losses in their family. So we, we pray for them. And, you know, this time of year, you really have to cherish your, your time with family. So I made sure to tell my players, make sure you call your family, make sure you call your mom. You know, those are fortunate to still have their moms, you know, alive and make sure you spend time. No doubt, coach. There's no doubt, man. Uh, you know, for those who have lost, it's to them tough time of year. I can only imagine how they feel. It's not a great feeling, but having people around who they really do care about you and to give you a sense of sense of community is something that can kind of won't replace the loss, but kind of will take the sting out of the loss a little bit there for, for those who need that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, um, I got to spend a day <laughs> with, my, with my family and, and some family came from out of town to visit, you know, um, visit us in, in, in uh, where we live. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's, it's the best part of that. The best part of, of, of the holidays is just family. You know, it's not the food, you know, it's not the, the gifts. It's, it's being around family. And I've had, you know, many memories of, of being a, a little kid and, and having, you know, your cousins and your grandparents and your parents and everybody, aunts and uncles around. So that's the most important thing. No doubt. And coach, you know, uh, I see that you all had a great uh, two games stretch here at home again. Um, we claimed it last week. And it came from fruition once more. Um, Spring Hill start with that game. Um, back and forth game, coach, uh, 72, 70 and, uh, Secure uh had that put back for you to get the game there for after throwing 25 and 10 for you that night. He played he played huge for us. You know, um we we uh played a really good team at Spring Hill. Um we had to go to overtime to to get the win. And you know, uh we were fortunate. Uh we were fortunate. They they continue to make runs and make plays and you know, we actually won the game not on that shot by Shakur. We actually won it because of a missed free throw. They they ran a great out of bounds play. A lot of coaches uh, will run a, a a screen for their uh, guy running the baseline, and and my kid got caught in that screen. And and um, we were fortunate that they did not you know cash in on the free throws. But very well coached team by by Coach Craig Kennedy. 
Um, they're going to be really good in the league. I think our league is really, really good. And um, that was important for us to get that home conference win. So we're, we're, we'll take it. And and, and we um, we moved on to last night and, and um, we, we, another close one, but we'll take that one too. I hear that coach, man. You know, Go ahead and spray, go ahead and spray here though, coach. You gotta be happy with this though. You shot only 32 percent from the field and won the game. And and you grabbed 47 rebounds. That should tell your guys right there that on nights you're not making shots, but if we defend, we rebound, and we don't make costly game plan errors, that even on nights like that, we can still get the job done. The rest of the season. That's right. That's right. Uh, man, you're 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 good at what you do, Jr. You you actually hit the nail on the head with uh, those two stats because I told them that you know um, after the game I believe we had 24 offensive rebounds. So I told them that you know that's how you win games, and I said that's the only reason why you know we we had a chance to win it is because we did a great job rebounding. That led to us getting to the free throw line. That led to to extra possessions. That led to you know the the best time to shoot a three is off an offensive rebound. So that led to timely shots. So rebounding in that game was was huge. It was huge. And I think that's where young men can learn because I feel this way, coach. Like those little things, offensive rebounds, free throw blockouts. You know, second chance points, not getting any loud ball turnovers. In a back and forth game, those little small things add up, and over time it gives you enough cushion, or to win games like that because those little small things that the fans don't really notice, the, like me and you, a coach or a coach's son or a guy who knows who's played as well, those small things that people take for granted really matter in winning. You know what, Jr. You you should have been with my team the next day because on Sunday when we watched the film. That's all we talked about. And we said exactly what you said. Those little things is what sustains winning. And we talk about winning ways all the time. And, you know, we have to pay attention to those things every game. And that's how you're going to, you know, win, you know, one game, two games, three, four, five, you know, on down the line in a row is you have to take care of the ball, especially with live ball turnovers, because that leads to transition points. And then you have to protect your paint. You have to rebound. You have to not only get defensive rebounds, but you have to get some offensive rebounds. And we talk about that every day. And just like every other team talks about it every day. So it's just about the teams that execute that, that game plan. No doubt. And, and last, I guess, Tuskegee, um, another tight game, you know, uh, where you had to, Really defend like crazy and, you know, have guys step up in key moments. And uh, Andy Antoine got a key defensive play there at the end there for you guys. And uh, talk about this too, Coach Gills, how I know you're a defensive guy and teaching your guys how important defense can is to winning because defense is what getting you the job of finishing with rebounds, defending like crazy, not – letting guys get open shots when you should not get open shots, knowing your scouts the right way. And just talk about how, when you watch this film today with your, with your guys, about how important it is to do these small things we keep talking about that leads to winning. Well, you know what? We we went backwards as far as rebounding. So it's funny that we're talking about how we have 47 rebounds against Spring Hill, and I think we only had something crazy like maybe yeah, he, just 14 he, he, yeah, yeah, I read about I read, read about about twenty one points, twenty one rebounds rather, which is like there wow. you go, and still there won. You go. And 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 we still won the game, and we won the game because of our defense, because we had to guard extra possessions. Um, we, you know, Andy had that block at the end of the game, and I challenged Andy at halftime, and I told him the game would be won in the paint, and it was won in the paint. Um, he had a key. One of his few field goals was a key um, uh, make, you know, in the second half. And then, you know, he he stayed out of foul trouble, which was great. But, you know, Tuskegee, man, uh, Coach Taylor, he has some big guys that they they destroyed us in the paint. Uh, Martez Jones, um, one of the best players in the SIAC. Um, I talked to uh, Tez after the game and I talked to Coach Taylor and I said, you know, I think he's – 
probably one of the best forwards, you know, in the in the league and in the country. He does such a great job offensive rebounding, and he killed us last night. And we're fortunate to come out of, of, of the game with a W. But our defense was huge last night. It led to a lot of turnovers on their part. That led to a lot of transition points on our part. And we're just going to have to work harder to protect our, uh, our uh, defensive boards. We play a, a D1 team tomorrow in FAMU, and they're going to be big and they're going to be athletic too. So we're going to have to really, you know, hone in on those little details of boxing out and going to get the ball. And coach, what's, what's good is that you can defend the home court so far this year. You're 4-0 at home in Albany. And talk about the importance of that, because I know in the NBA, you talk about you want, you want to win your home game still on the road. You want to – so talk, talk about that for sure, whatever, teaching your guys to really defend on the court and understanding and that's going to help you down the road for seeding purposes and just winning games and that tally, defending the home court way, way comfortable at. Winning, winning at home is a focus thing. Winning at home is being able to, you know, block out distractions and not allow, you know, the, the people you go to school with, family, to kind of get in your head. You have to kind of zone them out and focus. You want to play well for them. Don't get me wrong. You want to, you want to enjoy them, but you want to enjoy them after the game. And they're not going to know an appropriate time to come and talk to you. You're going to have to kind of, you know, block them out. So it's huge to win home games. If you don't win your home games, you're not going to have a good season. And, and that's why we're having a good season so far to start because we're winning our home games, obviously. So winning at home is everything. You know, I can't talk about, you know, being in the NBA. I can only talk as a fan, but as a college coach, I can say that you have to focus. When you when you win home games, not only are you going to get your, your campus and your fan base to be there for you and to cheer for you, but you're going to get teams to come in and you have that advantage if you know, okay, we don't lose at home. Teams are already going to know we're going to have to really beat them. And you have to zone in and focus when you're at home. You're sleeping in your own bed. You're you're shooting in your own baskets. There should be no reason why you shouldn't play well at home. Well, Coach, I'll tell you for me, I'm more focused on the road than I am at home. I, even for me, <laughs> I'm more focused on the road than I am at home. So I lock in better when I'm in a hotel room to myself than I am in Atlanta, just being real. Because because of the distractions, right? I don't have to answer ticket requests or this and that, do this and that, you know? So even for me, I can lock in better on the road and do my thing and not have to worry about the distractions of home games. It's the real thing. And I don't think, you you just said it, ticket requests. It's the same thing at the college level. You know, you your family doesn't know that calling you or texting you anywhere within eight hours of the of the game time is not a good thing because you have to lock in, you have to zone in. And a lot of it is the pressure of I want to play well for, you know, the fans and, and, and for, you know, my my students and the, the, the common students I go to school with and, and family. And you need that time. You need that time to kind of zone in and lock in. So it's a focus thing. And Family's not supposed to care about that. You're supposed to care about it. So you have to kind of tell family and friends, hey, I'm going to zone in and lock in. We're, we're playing at home. I'll talk to you after the game. That's a maturity thing. No doubt. And, Coach, I also want to talk to you about this, too, is learning to win close games. That's, that's a process. And that is a process. Two, two close games in different ways. And being able to use those teachable moments the rest of the year to teach your team, like, We've won in close situations in various ways. In multiple ways, get the job done. As my dad says, what a one way to, to skin a cat. <laughs> so it's <laughs> talking about that trying to win close games, teaching your team that way. It's them being confident, hey, we can it's a formula that we're doing this. We can do it. What, what we can do it what, what one way, but there was something we must do to get these close games winning and then do it on the road as well. As you let these games flip around for you, going on, uh, away from Albany, Georgia. It was, it goes back to what I just talked about with maturity. So last season, we lost a lot of close games. So when we won our first close game this year, I told the team, 
that it's better to learn from a win than a loss. And I can be the first guy to testify and say, you don't learn anything from a loss. You think you do. And that's great coach speech. But the only thing you do from a loss is get down. So that anxiety comes back when you're in another close game. I can tell you that from experience. It is what it is. But when you win a close game, it's everything. Because you can, you actually can focus and lock in on more of the details to say, man, I can't put myself in this position again when it comes up again. But when it does come up again, you've already done it. So you're already zoned in and locked in and know and have the confidence because confidence is a funny thing, man. You know, I, I've had to release my control of my confidence and I, I get my confidence now in the Lord. So I say to myself, you know what? I don't play. I'm not in control. All I could do, I've done my preparation as far as praying and, and, and praying for my guys and praying that we're focused enough to get this done. But at the end of the day, it's, it comes back to maturity and confidence. So that's why winning post games are important. And it's going to help you down the line in the season. And after experiencing, you know, losing a lot of close games last year and, and, and thinking that, okay, we'll learn, you don't because that lack of confidence comes back. On the flip side, the confidence of us winning that first home game, that first close game, is everything. So now we've been in that position before. We know we kind of know what we what we have to do and we because we've done it so many times, we're prepared. No doubt. And you got to your trip come up on a Tallahassee today to go to play Bam U tomorrow. You got you go to Tennessee to play Lane and Lamont Owen Jackson and in Memphis. So talk about this uh three game road trip coach Gail and our so I'm test your team the D1 level tomorrow night, but also uh, get back in conference play and see what see, see, see you guys are prepared for us on this uh, three-game track you got, man. Well, last year, you know what's funny? We talked about close games and winning at home. So last season, we actually went to FAMU. It's an exhibition. We went to FAMU. We lost in overtime. The very next night, we played at home against Georgia Southwestern. They ran us off the floor. And a lot of it was we gave so much energy in that family overtime loss. And George Southwestern, they took advantage of us kind of being down. And, you know, we we had enough energy to start. But we didn't have enough energy to sustain. So now on the flip side, we're coming off a close win at home in Tuskegee. And like you said, we started three-game uh, road trip. So I'm hoping and I'm praying that us winning these close games can lead us into doing what we're supposed to as far as our energy and effort tomorrow night, but also understanding tomorrow night's an exhibition and going into conference in the weekend and being locked in and focused on the road because the conference games mean so much more than the exhibition game tomorrow, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to win. We always want to win every game that we play. No doubt. It's just kind of understanding the boundaries and layers to it. You know, it just wants to get up to maturity, understanding, you know, so what it is. And, and Coach Gill, you have some nice in the corner there. Talk about that beautiful cross you have. I think there's all from state colors almost behind oh, you yeah. there, Coach. Oh, yeah. Um, one, of my, one of my players, I'll, I'll show it to everybody. One of my players um, from, from uh, on the team uh, from Albany, uh, Georgia, uh, Lee County High School alone, uh, J.B. and Johnson. His mom um, does a cross for him, and he has one in his in his locker room on both campuses that we have. So she made one for me, and 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 I I was blown away. And it it has. I'll, I'll actually um, give the scripture. I'll have people read it, but it's Hebrews eleven one, and it's Romans eight twenty eight. And I encourage you know, everyone to go read their Bible. I'm not a, a minister, so they can read it for themselves because, you know, the Lord speaks to all of us individually. You don't have to go through a middleman. So I, I encourage them to get in their Bible and, and read to see what that mess message has for them. But it's just, a, you know, it's it's awesome to see. We talked about family and friends. So it's awesome to see that families are so invested, you know, in in in, in the team 
And then obviously moms are so invested in their sons having success. So there, to me, there's no coincidence when it comes to success. There's no coincidence when it comes to failures. A lot of times, now this is what I will say. I, I, I do think you learn a lot more from winning than from losing. But I also think that when you go through adversity, like we went through last year, it tests you. And, and the Lord knows you know, what's going to happen to you. So the Lord wants to see how you're going to respond to that adversity, you know, and everybody talks about the story of Job and I, we went through it last year and Javian was a part of that last year. He's a senior now. So a lot of coaches will want their young people to have success, not just because they root for their own players, but because they've seen what they had to go through with that adversity. So that means a lot to me you know, what his mom did for me. Um, I have that close to me. And I just want, you know, everybody to know that a lot of times, you know, student athletes and coaches have a bond that's a much bigger than basketball. I'm sure you can attest to that, JR, with your career in college. Yes, I can, you know, and and even because this is in the media, relationships I have with certain guys like yourself. And, you know, it's, it's funny that, you know, I'm in the media, a lot of you guys see me as a friend because I don't come off as media. Because I, I don't act that way. Because I actually play and I'm different like that. <laughs> I will attest to that. That is true. That is true. And and the thing is, I I look to form relationships with people, not with titles. So, JR, whether whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing, we would have a conversation like this anyway. You know? And... I'm genuine in, in who I am. I know who I am. Um, no one's going to corrupt me. Nothing's going to corrupt me. You know, I've been on this earth long enough where the Lord has had many conversations with me personally to kind of have me discern a lot of things. And I thank the Lord that I'm here sitting in this chair speaking to you, hopefully, you know, to reach people that need to come closer to the Lord and have their own relationship. And Coach Gill, I'm gonna just I'm gonna go behind and pull the curtain back. And you know, I'm in the media, but I don't act that way. Have I ever asked you once about a recruit, a scholarship, who's playing, who ain't playing, I'm trying to get information out of you? <laughs> <laughs> you only, JR, I can say this. Our relationship has only been you trying to help Albany State men's basketball and help me, you know, as as a coach. So I I, I'm very genuine, genuinely happy, you know, about about what we're doing and, and our relationship. And trust me, I prayed about it a lot. And all the Lord has revealed to me is that, you know, what you see is what you get with this this young man. Just keep telling him to 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 live the right way. That's all. That's all. So that's that's why I'm doing it. That's yes. why I'm doing it. Yes. Every show I've done it. Right. So, yes. you know, but. But, um, you know, God bless you, man. I, I appreciate you. A lot of people talk about helping others. And I, I listened to a message recently. Actually, it was yesterday when I was working out yesterday morning. And it was a great message about um, a, a trying to ask something from the Lord, but you're not willing to give. So the Lord wants to make you a conduit. And the more you give, the bigger he can put inside of you to for you to receive your blessings but for you to also to pass it forward so that's the biggest thing jr you're using your platform and and your expertise to help you know my program and i'm i greatly appreciate it and all i can do is pay it forward to someone else that will need help and that will need mentorship you know you no know, that's that's so great saying coach because that's, that's why i do what i do coach because i feel like so many people in this business are transactional yes and i'm not that way now I'll just I'll be flat out honest with people. I, I I either like you or I don't, but that's just that that's me being human. And if I really like you, I will go out of my way to help you. And I don't ask you about stuff that's that's mundane to me. This is more important to me talking about having real conversations, not who's on start, not who's gonna play rotations, uh, who you're recruiting, who you're trying to recruit. That's to me as mundane. I left the, the beat writers. I was earlier for the beat writers. I'm gonna give you give you a different story for my people. I feel like that's more important than who starts, who plays, with your rotation. What, what were you thinking when you put this guy? 
stuff like that. <laughs> I'm curious about this, Coach Gal, and I, I, I'm just that's not me. That's not my media way of doing things. I only have relationship with you, with you and guys like yourself because it's more important. Because when I retire from this radio show, I have a friend in Patrick Gale. Whenever that day nah. comes, I say, I'm done being been the boss. I'm going to be JR. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's more important to me <laughs> than trying to figure out right now, get you to tell me a little nugget. Go tweet out on Twitter, <laughs> on, on Instagram. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Coach. Real, like, real, a relationship that's not, that's not transactional, not to help me boost my or use you to boost myself. This ain't about me. It's about right. helping you and your program and helping another brother, you know, because you all don't, I just tell you in July when you did the interview, they don't, they don't cover you unless you win a lot or something bad happens. And that's not right. There's some great stories going on in SIAC. It shouldn't just be when somebody win a lot or get a new job, somebody gets fired or something bad happens. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, hey, so so you're preaching. I'm going to preach a little bit, man. I'll give you a little testimony, JR. So you don't even know this. I haven't even talked to you about this, but I was down when you sent me that email. Um, I was down because of the year we had last year. It was my worst year as a coach. And when you have those type of seasons, you, you you're, I'm human. So I, 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 I had to get closer to the Lord. I questioned of myself a lot. And... You sending that email was an answer to prayers of you are going through something, but you have to understand what you're going through is not going to be bigger than what you're going to be getting to. So what we're going through now with our success to start the season, I've already seen it just because of the conversations I've had and the tests and the adversity is what I had to get past. and. There's going to be more adversity. Trust me. I'm not saying, you know, we only played five games. So don't don't get me wrong. There's a lot of basketball left to be played. I'm not crazy enough to think that everything is good. We have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do. But if you don't have that vision, if you don't stay close to, to the Lord genuinely, uh, I don't need to pray to win games. I need to pray to get better as a person and to do my purpose. And I need to have a relationship with him. That's that's the bottom line. That's all I look at. But I do know this: what he promises, his 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 word is not in void. And that's what I've had to learn. That you can't look at the past, you can't look at situations that's going on now and think that's it. You can't wake up and say, "Oh, my back hurts." You have to wake up and have a healing, you know, vision, and you have to have a positive outlook. And that kind of can translate to the people that you're with and the people that you're around, the more positive you are. I, I pray, I pray for my enemies this morning, JR. I pray for those that I know that that don't mean me well. And I just pray for them and I ask, you know, for the Lord to forgive me, just like I have to forgive them. Because at the end of the day, they're human too. So JR, though I'm telling you now, I appreciate you just reaching out to me because honestly, I, I I was down. I, I I was a coach that wasn't winning games. And I'm thinking, why in the heck would somebody want to reach out to me to do anything? And what you did was you showed me that, no, stop thinking in that light. Think, in, think of a light of success and winning. And JR, since since we've been talking, look, you, 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 you've been claiming victories for me. So don't let the show end without you claiming some more. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna claim the fam you beat for tomorrow night. I'm gonna claim it at, at Lane College. That's still seated where I know very well. And the one on in Memphis, it was the, magi the magician. So I'm claiming it for you, Coach. Three and oh week for you. A great report next Tuesday. And Coach, I'm gonna tell you this too, Coach. I'm gonna tell you what I got. I told you then. I didn't care about your record. I saw you as, as, as a brother, and I can boost you up a little bit. Because I feel like you needed that. Now, I didn't know you needed it, but now I know you needed it more than ever. But I didn't look at you as a record. I looked at you as, as a person and, and as a man. That's why I tell a lot of my guys in the business, why, why you want to talk to me for it? I'm losing. I'm not going to ask you about losing. I'm going to ask you about something that's positive. Because you know as coach, in my, and you know in my shows, I don't want just negatives. Really. It's not what I do. There are people who do that. That's not who I am. I'm here to uplift and boost you up, not bring you down. Why, right. why could not they to be torn down? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I, and, and I so 
Listen, man, not only do I appreciate it, I want people to understand that you can block your blessings when you judge. You can, and, and it's funny, I just got this message this week and, and the Lord said to me, you know, a lot of people that you think are for you really aren't for you. And a lot of people that you try to push away that you think are for you really just want to support you and, and really think and, and pray for you. And I was like, wow. And then I started to kind of think about everybody that I'm around. And it made me think, well, the only way I can be is the same way with everyone. Uh, just like you just said, I have to be positive, have to be uplifting. And quickly you can discern because you have to work on yourself. It's like a marriage. You don't marry the same person um, when you've been married for a long time. That person evolves, you evolve. So it's just uh, relationships, humans. You know, we're, 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 we are God's creations, but we're, we're not perfect. So we have to understand that we have to constantly try to get to know and discern people. So, man, I appreciate what you do, man. And it's, it's, it's cool to be doing it through the vehicle of, of, of our athletics and basketball. That's what's cool about it. No doubt, because we're giving you real life messages, not just basketball, which is important that we do it on the Patrick Gale show. It's going to get bigger and better and keep on going. We're going to get to playing these victories this week, and Coach, we'll see you next Tuesday. And we'll hopefully, with a great report, send you smiling with a great report for us this week, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, JR, I'm going to be smiling regardless. That's something I've had to learn, too, just because we're both alive and we both can can spread the message, and and, and hopefully people will, will listen to this message that we had today. No doubt, folks. It's Episode 5 of the Patrick Gale Show. We'll see you next week. Be blessed all. We'll talk to you again down the road.